Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Jared from One Earth Mushrooms. So if you've been following along in the Everything Monotub series, so far we've talked about the materials that we're going to need for our Monotub grow project, the temperature requirements for our spawn, and how to inoculate our spawn. And today I want to look at one tip that's going to help us colonize our spawn a lot faster and reduce the incidence or the possibility of contamination of our spawn. And it comes down to just one simple thing, and that's shaking and mixing our spawn. Now, I know this seems simple, but if you look back at some of my older videos, you'll see that the information I'm putting out today is actually different than I've done in the past. I've learned a few things along the way, and I want to share those things with you today. So we're going to look at how shaking works, and I drew up a cool illustration on how it works, um, why it works, and when to do it, as well as a few things that we want to avoid when it comes to shaking and taking care of our spawn. All right, let's jump right into the video. We're gonna start here with a single inoculation point in the center of our jar. And we're going to assume that we can only colonize as fast as the mycelium will travel across grain to grain transmission. Over the first couple days, it's gonna spread out in kind of a circle um, as it travels between the grains. And then when it gets to about 25% colonized is when we're going to want to shake it. If we shake it too much earlier than 25%, it's not gonna have as great of an effect as it would at around 25%. And waiting past 25% really just kind of delays the effect that it's going to have. So from my experience and also from reading what other people do, uh, it seems that 25% is right about ideal. And let's pause right here just to take a look at a couple pictures of what that 25% looks like. And obviously in real life it's not going to be just a single inoculation point. Here this is pink oyster that I have on rye grain and you can see there's two big spots of uh, mycelium growing there. And I'm gonna just estimate that's about 25%. So that's when I decided to shake up this jar. So just for conversation's sake, I wanted to take a look at what it's gonna be if we shake and don't shake. So the jar on the left has been shaken. And because we shook it, it's gonna disturb the mycelium's growth cycle a little bit. So for about a day or two, it's gonna be pretty slow at growing. So that's why I paused for a day or two on restarting the growth there. And as you can see, the jar on the right, the unshaken one has continued to spread and colonize throughout the jar. But the mycelium on the left now has all these different points throughout the jar that it's colonizing at about the same rate just there's way more points that are colonizing at the same rate, so the entire jar is going to colonize much faster than the unshaken jar. So in this little illustration here, we're fully colonized by about day 18 or 19 with the shaken jar, and it's going to take us past day 20 to get the unshaken jar to colonize. Now real life, depending on the variety that you're colonizing, might be a lot faster or it could even be slower. Some things take a while. I know this is probably pretty accurate for lion's mane. In my experience, lion's mane takes about three weeks to fully colonize a jar of grain. Here's one more look at that pink oyster. So it's fully colonized here. And then I just wanted to throw in a picture of what it looks like after I've broken it up for the final time, right before I go to use it in a fruiting block. So you can see all the grains are pretty well coated there. A few grains that are pressed up against the glass don't have mycelium coating them, but for the most part, it looks really good. Okay, so now that we've looked at why we want to mix our spawn and when we want to do it, let's take a look at how we do it. Breaking up the jar is as easy as just smashing it against something that is a somewhat solid surface. So here I have a towel rolled up on my workbench. Uh, some other methods I've seen are a bike tire. So just grab a bike, uh, beat it against the tire. One thing I would say is just be careful. Sometimes these jars have broken. It's never happened to me, but I've read of other people doing it. And uh, obviously flying glass and whatnot could cut your hand. These jars are pretty tough, but just try to stay safe when you're doing this. Make sure you're not cutting yourself. So there's a few things that we're going to want to avoid uh, during the colonization process of our grain spawn. First, it's not necessary to shake it more than one time. I mean, you can, and as you've seen in my older videos, I've shaken it more than one time, and it's not gonna kill it off, uh, and it's not gonna have huge detrimental effects. 
but it's really not necessary and it does make the colonization process take longer. As I showed in that illustration, it's going to take a day or two for the spawn to recover from the stress of being shaken up and broken up like we did. The second thing that we want to avoid is opening up our grain spawn for any reason. So one reason that you might want to open up your grain spawn is if you go to shake it and you can't get everything to break up the way you want it to. Say there's big chunks left over and you, no matter how hard you beat it on a tire or beat it on your workbench, those clumps aren't going away. I promise you, it will fully colonize even with those clumps in there, so just leave it. And when it comes down to the end of it, once everything's fully colonized, we can actually safely handle it with a clean, gloved hand and we can break it up by hand. So the last thing we're going to avoid is opening the jar if there's any contamination. If we see some weird colors in there, maybe give it a day uh, and if those colors start spreading like crazy, it's probably contamination. Uh, the best bet is just to throw the whole thing away, jar included. Don't open it up and especially don't open it anywhere near your workspace. So all of those spores or that bacteria that's growing inside your now contaminated grain spawn is just going to go airborne. First, uh, you're going to breathe it, which you don't want to do because we're talking about things like E. coli or trick. We just don't want those things in our bodies. And the second thing is it's going to contaminate everything in our workspace, which is just going to make things difficult for us in the future. It's going to really increase our chances of contamination down the road. For me, the grain spawn colonization process is my favorite part of the entire experience. I can visually see that the work I'm doing is having some effect and I know that if I can make it through colonization of the spawn, I can get through fruiting. I really hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Lately I've been struggling to get videos out every three days as I initially promised. There is a lot of work putting these videos together and I'm also trying out some new video editing software that's taken me a little while to learn. So stick with me, I promise I'm kicking out videos as often as I can uh, and hopefully soon I'll be back up and running at having a new video every three days. Alright guys, thanks for watching. See you around. Bye.